Today we're looking at vectors in Cartesian form and polar form and also unit vectors. Previously we learned that vectors are a quantity that has a magnitude and a direction. We can express a vector with an arrow and we could call this vector u. We can put this vector on a Cartesian graph. So it has an x direction amount. So it goes a certain amount in the x direction. Let's call this amount A. It goes a certain amount in the y direction. Let's call this B. So U is equal to some sort of amount in the x direction plus some sort of amount in the y direction. We have these little vectors here, i and j, to indicate which direction these a and b are going in. So this is the i direction, this is the j direction. These i and j vectors are unit vectors. This is the first form of u, the Cartesian form, by amount. And we write u equals bracket a comma b. That's the Cartesian form, an x and y amount for u. The other form is called the polar form. And this is where trigonometry comes in handy. So again, we have this u vector. And we're going to split it into the magnitude and the direction. In this case, it's the angle. And there's a special word for the direction. It's called the argument. So if we consider the Cartesian plane again, and we start from the positive x-axis, and we go, that is anti-clockwise, we travel a certain amount called theta until we get to our vector u. This is the angle we want the magnitude. We need to use Pythagoras. So I don't know if you remember Pythagoras, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So the magnitude is going to be the square root of a squared, which is the x length here, plus b squared, and the square root of those two sum together. And we get the magnitude, the hypotenuse of that vector. To figure out the angle, we can use, we have the adjacent and the opposite, and we want to find the angle for the adjacent and the opposite, a and b, so we can use tan negative 1. B over A, or the Y value over the X value to figure out that angle. And that's how we convert from Cartesian to polar. So polar will have the magnitude first, and then the angle or the argument second, like that. I and J are forms of unit vectors. A unit vector has a magnitude of 1. So if we look at the I and J, the I vector is a unit vector going in the X direction, but it has a magnitude of 1. The J vector is a unit vector, and it has a magnitude of 1 as well. The angle for I for the x-axis is 0. The angle from the x-axis for j is 90 degrees. I hope this is making sense. Let's do an example. So we've been given a vector. It wants us to determine the magnitude of u. So it shows us where the vector finishes. 3 
for the x value, negative 5 for the y value. It wants the magnitude. So we need to use Pythagoras. We need to do the a squared, which is the x length, plus b squared, which is the y length. For this example, the a squared is 3 squared. The b squared is negative 5. So 9 plus 25, we have a magnitude of 34, square root 34. All right, the second one, we want a direction of u. So we can use theta equals 10, negative 1, b over a. You can also write it as, instead of b over a, you could write y over x. Either is fine. So we simply sub in um, the y value, negative 5, and the x value, 3. If this were an exam, um, you could use your calculator. If it was tech-free, you would use your special triangles or standard triangles. In the calculator, we get negative 59.04, which makes sense. It's going in the clockwise direction, which makes it a negative answer. So that's the magnitude direction. We've turned it into polar form. So use equal to square root 34, comma, negative 59.04. It wants the true bearing of u. The true bearing, I'm not sure if you remember doing this. The true bearing is starting from north. and going clockwise towards the direction. So it wants this angle in here. Now what do we need to add to our angle to get this? Well, this first bit here is 90 degrees. So we have to just go the angle in here plus 90. True bearing is 90 plus 59.04. So I, if I explain it again, the 90 degrees is this bit, and 59 is this bit in here. So we added those two together to get the true bearing. All right, last one. Oh, I already did it. That was D there. We can also change a vector into a unit vector. A unit vector is denoted by a little hat on top. So we often write I with a little hat like that, J with a little hat, and these re represent unit vectors in the X direction and the Y direction. To convert um, a vector into a unit vector, we just divide that vector by the magnitude. So if I, we look at the previous example, u was 3i and negative 5j up here. So to convert u into a unit vector, we divide by the magnitude that we found, which was square root 34. So that is a summary of Cartesian form, polar form, and unit vectors. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.